All right, so in the last video, we covered what an F-test or an ANOVA is conceptually. In this example, we're going to be working through a real table with some values to see whether any of these three groups is significantly different from any of the other ones. Okay, remember, a one-way ANOVA does not tell us which of the groups are different, just that at least one of them is different from all the other ones. In this example, let's say that we have three different dosages of a drug. We have 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, and 100 milligrams. And we have four observations in each of these columns. Okay, so four observations for each group. These numbers are somewhat arbitrary. Think of them as numbers representing health, let's say. So for each of these groups, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the mean and the sums of squares for each of these columns. So for example, for this column, we just simply add up all of these, divide by 4, which is the number of people in this group, and we get a mean of 3, and a sums of squares of 8. Do that for all of the other groups here. We need a few other numbers before we can start calculating our F ratio. What K means in ANOVA is the number of groups. So we have three columns representing three different dosages, three different groups of people, exposed to different levels of a drug. So K equals 3. N is the total number of people or observations in our experiment. So across all these different groups we have a total of 12 observations. So N equals 12. G stands for the grand total. We simply sum up every value in all of these columns. So 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 plus 5, all of them add them up together, and we get a G of 60. Last, take the sum of each X value squared. Remember, X traditionally represents just a single observation. So 3 squared plus 5 squared plus 3 squared plus 1 squared plus 5 squared plus 5 squared, and so on, until you add all of them up. And in this case, the sum of all the X squares is 392. We also need to take account of the degrees of freedom both between and within. This will be important when you look up your critical F ratio in the F tables. So for DF between, this is simply the number of groups, or K, minus 1. So 3 minus 1 in this case is 2. The degrees of freedom between is the total number of observations minus the number of groups, or represented symbolically, N minus K. In this case, 12 minus 3, which equals 9. Last thing we need to do is calculate the sums of squares both within, between, and total. Well, the sums of squares within is pretty easy. We simply take the sums of squares across all the groups and we add them together. So, 8 plus 12 plus 16 equals 36. Next, I calculate SS total. I'll show you why in a second. And that, symbolically, is the sum of x squared minus g squared over n. Okay, we have all those values. Simply plug those in here, and you get a value of 92. The reason I did that is because it makes calculating the sums of squares between much easier. There's another formula, but it's pretty complicated, and I prefer not to use it. So I just take account, I take advantage of the fact that SS total is the sums of squares between plus the sums of squares within as your total sums of squares. You simply rearrange it and you have the sums of squares between is the sums of squares total minus the sums of squares within, which in this case is 56. Once you have all of that, it's very useful to construct what's called a source table because it can use this in any ANOVA calculation. We have the between, within, and total, and in each of the columns we have sums of squares, degrees of freedom, and our calculated variance. Okay? This is a weighted variance divided by the degrees of freedom. So we just plug in all of these. So between sums of squares, 56. Within sums of squares is 36. Total is 92. Degrees of freedom, which I calculated here. Between is 2. Within is 9. Now we simply divide. You can see this little division symbol right here. We divide the sums of squares by their respective degrees of freedom. So, for example, 56 divided by 2 is 28, 36 divided by 9 is 4. 
you may as well see this referred to as mean squares. And once you have that, simply take the ratio of these two right here, 28 divided by 4. I hope that their location makes that an easy operation to remember. And you get an F ratio of 7. To check for the significance of this F ratio, you need to look up the degrees of freedom in an F table. So you have two degrees of freedom. In this case, we'd have two and nine. And you'd have to look that up and compare that to a specific critical F ratio. If your calculated F ratio is more extreme or greater than it, then you go ahead and reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, you fail to reject the null hypothesis.